All right, so earlier in this lesson, we saw that if someone needs to get a digital certificate, they need to provide some information to certification authority, like uh, creating a certificate, uh, signing requests, send it to certification authority, and uh, certification authority verifies their information and generate a certificate for them. Now, this can be a huge task. It can be very overwhelming, especially when we have a lot of requesters that asking the certification authority to create a certificate for them. So that can quickly overwhelm the certification authority and create a bottleneck. Now, to manage this uh, digital certificate request and uh, creation and tracking the expiry date and the proper storage of that, there are several entities involved. So in this lesson, we're going to go through all those entities and find out what other organizations or entities involved in addition to certification authority. Now, we know that uh, we have a trusted third-party organization, which is called Certification Authority, that uh, receives the requester's information, and they verify the identity, and they basically tie their public key to their identity and uh, create a digital certificate. Having one root certification authority, as I mentioned, can uh, cause a bottleneck. That's why we have more than one certification authority to, to uh, do this job and take care of uh, certificate uh, creation. Even having few root certification authority can still cause bottleneck and can have some security issues because if we have one certification authority's key gets compromised, then all certificates that are signed by that particular certification authority are going to be compromised as well. So for the security purposes and to take the load off these uh, root certification authorities, we have other organizations that are called intermediate certification authority. Now, these intermediate certification authorities are subordinate entities to handle some specific tasks uh, that are handled by CAs. Basically, what they can do is they process certificate requests and verify the identity of the individuals uh, requesting these certificates. Now, to take the load even of these intermediate certification authorities and to save some costs, we have some other organizations that are called registration authorities. Now, registration authorities are also subordinate entities that are designed to handle some of the intermediate CA's tasks. For example, these uh, registration author authorities can uh, identify and authenticate requesters. They can obtain their public key and ensure that they own the private key associated with the public key. When these registration authorities receive this information, they can verify everything and then they can pass the information to the intermediate certification authorities to issue these certificates. So we can see, for example, in a region, we can have one or two certification authorities and we can have so many registration authorities in that area. So those registration authorities receive all the information and then they verify, they do all the required tasks and then they pass it to intermediate certification authorities to just issue the certificate and then uh, uh, send it to the users. Now, after these certificates are issued, for people to be able to locate and access these certificates, a robust, scalable, an online rep uh, repository system is uh, required. So certificate repository is uh, another entity that helps us with this. It's a publicly accessible database of all digital certificates that can be used to locate and view the status of all these certificates. Now, all these certificates that are issued have an expiration date. So at one point, the certificate expires and we have that expiration date for the security purposes. Now, sometimes the certificate becomes invalid before that expiration date. For example, the personal information of the requester changes, the name changes or the address changes, or sometimes in the worst cases, the 
private key is stolen and is compromised. So when the private key is compromised, then the digital certificate is basically invalid. The concept is pretty much the same as the driver's license. For example, if someone changes their name or they change their address, they need to get a new driver's license, have their driver's license changed because the current driver's license has invalid information, incorrect information. So we need to have an entity to take care of these things. So certificate uh, revocation is the entity that takes care of that part. So people can refer here and find out if a certificate is valid or not. Imagine I have a certificate which is not valid anymore or uh, someone has stolen my certificate and then they use that certificate to communicate uh, with someone else then if that person doesn't have a way to verify that the certificate that they're using is invalid, then their communication is not secure and um, they may lose some sensitive information. So for that purpose, we have a different way of doing this. We have two technologies that can keep track of these um, invalid certificates or revoked certificates. We have certificate revocation list and the other one is online certificate status protocol or OCSP. Now certificate revocation list is basically a file that has the serial number of all invalid certificates, all the certificates that are revoked. So if you go to under your certificate revocation list in your computer, you can see that list. Now I'm going to show you where to find that on your computer. So if you have uh, whatever windows that you have, if you go and search uh, for mmc.exe, if you run that and click yes here, let me maximize this and then go to file and add remove snap in and here look for certificate and here is certificates. Click on add and here I'm going to pick computer account next and finish and then OK. And here is the certificate snap in. So if I open this tree and I go under intermediate certification authority and I open that tree, you can see here I have certificate revocation list. If I click here, you can see the list of the uh, revoked certificates. You can see there is only one here and then effective date is uh, sometime in 2001. And the next update on that was on 2004. And that's the only uh, certificate that we have here in this list. Now, the second technology that I talked about is an uh, online certificate status protocol. Now, this one performs real-time lookup of certificate status. So the browser sends a request to OCSP responder. That's a server that has this uh, certificate information. And the server immediately replies back with the status of that uh, certificate uh, in the request. Now, the problem with this protocol is that you need to have access to, inter to the internet and your machine has to be online. If your machine is not online, then uh, your browser won't be able to check the status of certificate. That's why now there's a lot of modern browsers like Google Chrome are switching back to certificate revocation list. So these are the entities that are involved in handling digital certificates.